Buy my novel, Escape from the Village, from major booksellers online. Go to escapevillage.com. Subscribe to my Substack. Go to fountainheadforum.substack.com. Thank you. Welcome to the party, pal. This is Fountainhead Forum 173, and I'm talking to Marina Rocha. Uh, She is an intern with the Mises Institute. She's also uh, in Brazil, and she's going to talk about the uh, censorship situation. This is a First time I brought somebody on here from Brazil, and this is going to be great. So maybe we can talk also about what's been going on with Brazil and anything like anything else like that. So how are you, Marina? I'm fine, Chris. How are you? I'm Thanks fine. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so, uh, how'd, first of all, how'd you how'd you get in? How'd you end up at the Mises Institute? How'd you get into all this? Well, I work as an economic advisor for a lot of city councilors in Brazil. Yeah. And my boss there, he is a big fan of the Mrs. Institute. We also have Mrs. Brazil here, so I knew they had Mrs. Institute in the U.S. But at the yes. same time, I never, I never until up until 2021, I never heard anything about the Mrs. Institute. Yes. Per se. So my boss presented me to a lot of things they did, like articles, books, and all of this cool stuff. So I entered their website one day, and I discovered they had this, they have this thing called Mrs. University. Yes. And through that, I applied in 2022. I went to Mrs. University in 22. Went again last year, so I went to Mrs. University 2023 as well. And because of that, I like fell in love with the institution. It's a very good institution. They are really like there to help you grow and to help you learn things regarding Austrian economics and libertarian theory. So I saw this apprenticeship that they were having and I applied for it as well. And now I'm here as an apprentice. At the okay. So, so you're actually in Auburn now or you're in Brazil? No, no, no. Here. I'm sorry. I'm in Brazil. I went okay. to Auburn twice for Mrs. Yeah. University. Yeah. And of course you can just, uh, I don't know how, how they do it, but you, you can just, you can just fly into Atlanta and then get a yeah. ride from there. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Uh, you know, and, and of course when I, when I went to the Rothbard graduate seminar, it was all men, <laughs> even though otherwise, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so it was good. You got there. Uh, so anyway, uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on with this censorship regime, especially with Lula. It sounds like they're also engaging in a lot of lawfare as we'd call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So what can you tell us about that? Well, uh, I can tell what's happening right now first, and then I'll yeah. provide some context because one thing people are not talking about is the context that make the co- context actually make things worse. But so it is really important to learn the context as well. But right now we are having kind of like we are watching this fight between Twitter X and Elon Musk and this yes. judge called Alexandre de Moraes. Why it happened? At first, Alejandra, the judge, uh, one judge you mentioned, yeah. Yeah, one judge, but it's not only him. There are a lot of people involved in the censorship regime. He's the main character, but he does a lot of bad things as well. So this started at first, like one week ago, when Michael Schellenberger provided Twitter Files Brazil. He posted Twitter Files Brazil on X. He is here in Brazil currently because he had a conference, a libertarian classical liberal conference in the south of Brazil that he was giving a lecture to. So he was here. So he posted Brazil's Twitter files that showed a lot of election interference. One thing that is important to note is that through the Twitter files, he showed uh, he does not only talk about Moraes. He's not only talking about Alexandre de Moraes, the main character, but he's talking about also uh, some judges in local courts in the state of Sao Paulo as well. There were authoritarian during the elections. So because of that, Elon saw Brazil's Twitter files and saw the involvement Alexandre de Moraes had with the Twitter files and started to say a lot of things, to make a, a lot of allegations regarding what's happening right now in Brazil. And he's I can pretty much say he's kind of right in everything he's talking about what's happening here. So they're they're having this fight right now, and Elon threatened to not follow the court's orders if the Supreme Court keeps uh, mandating Twitter, keeps saying that Twitter should ban some profiles. There are a lot of right-wing profiles in Brazil from people that are actually even like 
in the US because they had to run away because of the censorship regime. Uh, there are a lot of right wing people and accounts and social media that we cannot see in Brazil. I can only see it if when I'm at the US or when I use a VPN because I cannot see their Twitter pages here because the judge Alexandre blocked their pages from yes. showing. So Elon was saying that he would not follow this orders any this order anymore. He would like free all the accounts. He would not he would stop banning them in Brazil. He didn't did any he didn't do anything in this regard yet, but he threatened that. And uh our so our judge and our Supreme Court system here in Brazil basically saw it and threatened to give very draconian fines to X per day and per account. So like, I think there are like 10 accounts or more, 50 probably, I lost count of which accounts are blocked or not. But each account that were to be like unbanned from Twitter, from X, they would have to pay a fine of $20,000 per day for each account. So this would be very, very expensive and this would imply a lot of costs to X company. So because of that, Elon said that if they're going to do that, if they implement these fines once he releases these accounts and let us see these accounts here in Brazil as well, uh, he will take X out of Brazil because he wants because principles for him, according to what he said on Twitter, are better than uh, are better than profit. So we have this risk of X being banned here, not only because because of the censorship regime and the Supreme Court's actions. Basically, there is also a possibility of this Supreme Court judge. He didn't say he will do that, but he can do. There is a possibility of him outright banning X altogether, like he did once with, twice actually, with Telegram, and he did once with other social media platforms as well. So, yeah. or for example, we don't have access to Rumble here because of the censorship regime, because uh, I don't know if he was this judge, so I cannot imply he's committing something that he didn't. So maybe he was him, or maybe it was someone also involved in the censorship regime that told Rumble that they should ban a YouTuber, a very famous pod podcaster here in Brazil, known as Brazil's Joe Rogan. Glenn Greenwald has a very good uh, video about that in his, then I'll, I'll send you later, about this case and about this guy uh, talking what happened with him because he's now, he ran away, he had to run away from Brazil and go to Florida because of the censorship regime. So, uh, Ale Alexander de Moraes or other judges also involved in the regime told Rumble that they should ban this guy's channel, Brazil's John Rogan's channel from Rumble, but they mm -hmm. didn't follow it. They said, oh, I'd rather uh, get out of Brazil than follow this order because Rumble is very big on free speech. So we don't have access to Rumble anymore because of this decision. I only can access Rumble through, uh, uh, through VPN and or through or when I'm out of the country, I don't have access to that because it is banned. So we have a risk to lose Twitter slash X as well because of this censorship measures. So here's what's happening right now. We don't know what's gonna happen. Elon is also trying to make his employees that work here in Brazil, trying to find a place for them to go out. People are speculating maybe to Argentina now because Malay would gratefully uh, welcome these people in because there is also a risk of the judge and also the censorship regime they, there is a risk of employees ex employees being arrested so this is how bad things are and also he's waiting to put his employees from ex on a safe place that's what he's saying then he said he will release all of the uh, demands this judge and the censorship regime in Brazil in general made for Twitter. So this is the context of what's happening right now. So we're waiting, basically. Yes, and well, well, not a side note. Uh, Mile is apparently going to be here in uh, 
maybe in my hometown, uh, oh, meeting cool. with Elon Musk uh, to discuss well, oh, the, the gay factory or whatever. So uh, there's definitely uh, something going on. Um, yeah, I, I don't see Mele uh, favoring a censorship regime. Yeah, you know, really. I mean, I, you know, Marina, I don't really know how old you are, but I, I'm I think this was really started boring a long time ago because I can remember uh, when a lot of the big tech companies first went into China mm -hmm. and China said, censor your websites. And they all said, okay, we'll censor them. And, you know, at the time it was Microsoft, Google, Yahoo. I mean, Yahoo was big back then. Uh, there really wasn't social media yet. And all of the big websites said, okay, China, we'll censor them. And it, and it, and it was interesting too, because I know, I know a guy who ran, ran a site who immediately was found his searches impacted, even though he was in America and, and, and the, and the one big one that did not cave into this was Wikipedia. Uh, Good. Which, uh, and Jimmy Wales, uh, I actually used to know him back in the nineties was, but, I, but I think this was all started and, you know, if you give into one corrupt government and, you know, okay, you've made profit, but what, you know, what, what is the cost you made of profit? Now you can't have a free and open exchange of ideas. It's, it's really just started with that. And I think it just snowballed here. It, it, and now there, you know, there's talk of pressuring uh, people here to mm -hmm. take down websites and uh, they're all doing it. And Facebook being, I think the worst offender of all, but yeah. So did you say Glenn Greenwald is no longer in Brazil? No, he is in Brazil. I said he has a video talking about this case okay. in particular because of the podcaster yeah, that was yeah. censored because there are so many cases that I can speak like, I can talk about all of the cases of censorship and all of the abuses from each case of censorship like for ages, but I'm trying to summarize things here because yeah. we only have an hour. Yeah. So Glenn, I told you that he has a good video about that that I'll send you later, but he is here in brazil and he's it's in it's getting interesting because he used to be very hated for uh the brazilian right used to hate him because he was always like left-leaning he praised lula and the socialist workers party he always uh tended to side with them he was against lula's prison that's another thing we can talk about so the right wing in brazil used to hate him a lot but right now he is coming out of as this free speech advocate and he and this free speech activist here and people on the right are starting to like him because the right right now is suffering a lot of free speech infringements basically so we yeah. have that but going back to the censorship regime and how it started i can i can start talking about the context and how brazil was not Brazil never had like a free speech tradition in terms just like the US has a free speech tradition. I know things are bad now. I know that nice. I read also you the US version of the Twitter files and what they did during the 2020 elections. But even so, I can see that the US, at least they have you guys have the First Amendment, right? Is yeah. is it I always messed up the two of them. The, the first, first amendment, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's yeah, it's the it's pretty is, we have we still have a pretty solid at least legally but they're 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 doing what they can to find ways around it and you know so, it's basically high, using using social media company companies as their yeah as their agents as which, their proxies right and saying well they're private companies says no you know no they're not private companies not if you're yeah yeah, it's, yeah, but, it's yeah but here in brazil we the right we have to free speech is very ambiguous so it depends on the judge because the constitution guarantees the right to free speech. But at the same time, we also have our uh, penalty code that was written in the, the one of the dictatorships we had in 1941. And we still have this legal code until now. And in this code, we there is a limitation. There are limitations to free speech, yeah. like what is considered right now hate speech. It's not written like hate speech hate speech it's written in 1941's language meaning injury and now be because things have changed the the courts and also our legal system amplify injury injuring meaning talking bad about someone like i don't know yeah calling we don't have like bad words like slurs or stuff like that racial slurs but like if you called someone 
the equivalent of the N-word we have here, some, a black person, you would be arrested. In the U.S., you can call someone that, the person would be mad at yeah. you, probably you will get in trouble, like get canceled and stuff like that, but you're not going to get yeah. arrested. Here, you cannot uh, do that. You cannot like be racist. Now they amplified in 2019 for homophobia as well. And you can not defamation for sure, but you guys have the defamation <clears throat> law here yeah. as well. And you and there's also one that is particularly uh, bad that calls for you cannot like uh, infringe on someone's honor. I don't know if that makes sense. So if someone if you say something about someone and if this person thinks that yeah. their honor is being infringed, whatever this means, because it depends on the judge as well, <laughs> whatever you can also suffer penalties that go and these penalties can go from paying fines which is already absurd to like going straight out to jail so yeah we never had a free speech tradition we had one dictatorship in the 30s mid 40s then we had another military dictatorship from this from 65 1965 to 1964 actually to 1985 so it was like a 21 year dictatorship and after that uh, a warning to people who think that dictatorships might solve things. After that, we had a lot of social democrats and communists and people like who had very left-wing and status beliefs writing our constitution, our new democratic constitution that is our current constitution that was written in 1988. So in this constitution, the right to free speech is ambiguous. We have the right to free speech, but it depends on these very exceptions and this many exceptions i told you about so yeah. we never had like a free speech culture but at the same time what's happening specifically right now is worse and i'm i'm going to show why even if you agree with brazilian law they are infringing in brazil infringing brazilian law the same law they claim to support they are <laughs> breaking them so uh then there was it. We never had a free speech history. We, we were not we we're not like China, but we're also not like the US. I think our free speech legislation looks a lot yes. like the European ones, probably. I don't know. Yeah. Well, as I could point out that, you know, the USA is one of the few countries where you can, you know, engage in Holocaust revisionism and not be arrested. Yeah. Here uh, which, you cannot do that. Which I think it's pretty much illegal in most places, but yeah. It's, which is one of the most disgusting examples I use for free speech, but it's it's free speech, yeah. Yeah, so this guy, that the podcaster that was censored, one of his examples was that he was like, he told once in his podcast, then his cancellation tour yeah. began, he told that he was in favor of free speech even for na Nazis. Like, yeah. I don't know if you can say this word on YouTube, even for like people who worship some regime in Germany, if you know what I mean. But in that, a lot of people here in Brazil got really mad because of that. And But that's also important. If you're a free speech absolutist, you have to defend it for people you hate. But we don't have this culture here. So yes. after, that, after that, there is the new censorship regime that's being implemented right now, that is happening right now. Do you have any questions about that? Uh, you know, sometimes I wonder if these censorship regimes are maybe a response to Melee because uh, some of the, all these people who are in the Sao Paulo Forum, uh, you know, Petro mm -hmm. and Maduro and some of these other uh, socialists are saying, uh oh, we got a problem here. It's, and I, I wonder if there's a desperation here because now they, well, they shut down free speech because it was not a response we, to Melee yeah. because yeah. it happened and it started happening in 2019. Yeah. And they were planning planning for the regime to be implemented. It's in one of the uh, articles I sent to you. They were planning for the implementation of this regime from 2017 onwards. So we, I think it was a response to Trump's election and afterwards to Bolsonaro's election. Yeah. So it's not necessarily to melee. And about the Foro de São Paulo and the socialists in Brazil, there's yeah. something that is really important for people to know about Brazil is that there are two different 
elite, political elite groups that are supporting the censorship regime in Brazil right now. We have the socialists with this yes. São Paulo view that they always wanted to implement it. They always wanted to implement censorship. They always wanted to regulate all media, not only social media, but like TVs, uh, newspapers, news outlets and stuff like that. So we have these people from the São Paulo Forum, from the socialist political elite, but we also have the social democratic slash, I don't like to use that term because it looks like conspiratorial, but I'm using it because everyone will understand the globe, the kind of globalist elite as well in Brazil. The globalist part of the political elite in Brazil is in favor of the censorship regime. So they are more much, they're like the World Economic Forum crowd together with the Foro de São Paulo crowd, because I joke for people who do not know what Foro de São Paulo is, I joke that is like the World Economic Forum, but on steroids, like the far, far, far left of the World Economic Forum, basically. I don't know yeah. if you but understand. For, but for Central and South America mostly, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, of so, course, uh, yeah, of course, uh, yeah. And, and Bolsonaro was, I, I think there are some similarities between Bolsonaro and Trump, but I, I don't, but obviously he has a different political culture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there are some similarities on, I like to explain to American people that there are some similarities between him and Trump and when it comes to aesthetics, when it comes to like political strategy and styles, like they're both populist for it, for instance. And I use that not as a bad word, I use it as a yeah. descriptive word. but. At the same time, on terms of policy, Bolsonaro had very a lot of differences from Trump, especially in terms of the free market. Like Bolsonaro was more of a Chicago school, defender of Chicago school and policy. One fun fact about him is that on his first term, he was like open borders, but for Venezuela, because we share a border with Venezuela and we are receiving a lot of Venezuelan refugees uh, because of what's happening in Venezuela, basically. So Bolsonaro was like, he really cared about the situation. But at the same time, he had a lot of issues as well. Yeah. Especially uh, the military wing of his government that I never liked. Uh, people, like studious people, like people who study things on the Brazilian right also do not like. M only like the masses, like the military streak of, the, of Bolsonaro's government here. But he had some issues as well in terms of political strategy when it comes to tackling the censorship regime as well. So there's that. And I can start talking about when it happened, what was the first, were, were the first actions of this regime right now, if you want to. Yeah, sure. You know, it's interesting because are there any roads that go between Venezuela and Brazil? Because I, I know where that border is and it's, yeah. it's all, it's all wild rainforest. Yeah. It's like we should, I don't know if there are any, probably there are roads, of yeah. course, but. Well, uh, I know like, there's one road that goes from Peru to Brazil. One, mm -hmm. even though they have a very long border, but it's just all no man's land, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, the, they're not, there aren't, no, there are some roads, but the border we share, we sh it's also located in a very poor state. Yeah. So they had a they had a lot of bad infrastructure problems because of the yeah. uh, the refugees and they cannot they don't have the structure to receive this these refugees basically. Yeah. But and Bolsonaro cared about that. But going back to the censorship regime and yeah, how it started, started. Yeah. after Bolsonaro's election, uh, there is one thing people need to know as well about our courts is that we also not only have a Supreme Court and our Supreme Court also serves as like the maximum court of the country. So if you are, I, it's kind of like impossible only unless you're like rich, but if you like are accused of a crime and you want to get arrested no, and you will get arrested, you can appeal. So you can appeal to a lot of instances up until the Supreme Court. So it's common, for example, for our Supreme Court to judge like drug crimes, to drug to judge about drug dealers and stuff like that, that would not happen in the US. Another th important thing I also need to talk about is how our Supreme Court also 
we also have a branch of the Supreme Court called the Electoral Court that oversees elections in a very centralized way. So this court is responsible for running elections in the country, seeing if there are irregularities happening. That was when the problem started as well. And also, uh, uh, and also like seeing if judging like politicians, if they committed any fraud or any bad things during illegal things during the election. So we also have the electoral court that is also very prevalent in the censorship regime. I'm going to explain about, do you have any questions related to this? Those two important things. So, so uh, Bolsonaro started this. What was Bolsonaro's motivation for, st or, or this started under Bolsonaro? What was the motivation? Were these people conspiring against him at the time, or? No, it was not. It was firstly not against him and his supporters. What yeah. happened was Bolsonaro won in 2019, and yes. with Bolsonaro, there are a lot of conservative class, a mix of conservative, classical liberals. There are were no libertarians. No, one libertarian was elected in 2019 as well. They were elected to Congress. And these people wanted to approve reforms. They wanted to, especially reforms in the judicial system. They wanted to investigate corruptions, corruption allegations, and other irregularities that were supposedly happening in the judicial system as well. Because we had this operation, I don't know if you heard about Operation Car Wash. It was like a big huge corruption investigation in Brazil, it arrested, it was responsible for Lula's arrest, it arrested a lot of people from the Workers' Party and from the establishment as in general, not only socialists were arrested then. And in this car wash operations, some things that people said, some, pe some things that the interrogations during this operation uh, showed was that there was probably some corruption cases and corruption scandals in the Supreme Court related to judges, specific judges of the Supreme Court. So the censorship regime firstly began with, uh, firstly began because there was an investigation related to one of the ministers of the Supreme Court and not Alexandre, another minister, and this investigation was being seen as suspicious for the other ministers because they wanted to defend themselves, right? So we had that in the after Bolsonaro's victory in the 2018 election. We the Federal Revenue Service was investigating uh Jumar Mendes and his wife Jumar Mendes is one of the Supreme Court justices we have right now. They were investigating him for like fraud in tax revenue and things like that. So uh, the first action of this censorship regime was to uh, uh, was to uh, shut it down, shut this investigation down. Because of that, the conservatives that were elected to the to Congress wanted to implement a. CPI that is a short for uh, Public Inquire Commission, an investigation in Congress to know what was happening because of this this other investigation, the our version of the IRS was doing about this minister. So it was like a it was like an inquiry they wanted to implement an inquiry to uh, investigate Supreme Court justices and their relations with corruption so basically it started like that and then the supreme court was like mad for sure because the because congress was starting to act against the supreme court was starting to be very uh uh very like wanted to crack the out crack down on supreme court's corruption so uh there this was something that bothered a lot of supreme court justices but the regime afterwards, what happened was that uh, was that the regime wanted to shut it down, not only this investigation, but other investigations in the Operation Car Wash. And the first 
measure of the inquiry that originated, and it's an illegal inquiry, by the way, I can explain why it was illegal later, according to Brazilian law, but what originated the first illegal inquiry and the censorship regime that happened was a, a was an article, a story that was going to be published in a very kind of center right uh, pro car wash operation and anti-corruption magazine that wanted to release a story about the Supreme Court justice, not Alexandre de Moraes, but another Supreme Court justice called Gias Toffoli on how he had relationships with Lula. And that's something everyone knows. Everyone knows he's friends with Lula. It's not something that's hidden, but uh, the regime did not accept that. The Supreme Court justices do not did not accept that. They, they did not accept the story to be released. So they started this thing that it's called the the critics call it the end of the world inquire that's happening until today. Elon Musk isn't indicted in this inquire right now as well. But uh, it happened with this inquire, this end of the world inquire that started the investigations related to fake news and related fake news, true news actually, and related to the attacks the Supreme Court was suffering. So we had this inquiry that started in 2019. The magazine was censored. They could not publish their story. The attorney general back then, she was at least partially good. So she struck the censorship that the, the minister did. Alexandre de Moraes started with this inquiry. He was the one that ordered the magazine story to be censored. So the attorney general struck down his mandate, his demand of censorship, and she also struck down the inquiry. But then all of a sudden, they relieved this inquiry again. Alexandre Rice relieved this censorship inquiry. And there was, so firstly, the Bolsonaro's crowd was not the main target. The target, yes, the first target was a right of center publisher, a right of center magazine. But firstly, it was not people from the Bolsonaro, Bolsonaro's crowd. It's different. Like when I say, for example, people who are like who support Trump are different from like, like they are part of conservatism and like right wing, but they're not all the right wing. So it's basically in these terms I'm speaking about. So it started when to curb down on corruption, on corruption investigations related to the Supreme Court and also started to set as a censorship of a magazine. But the regime escalated in 2020 and I can explain what happened in 2020 <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, so it's pretty uh, interesting how this. Happens. So yeah, so it's and it's just continued from there. And now we're where we are right now. Where Musk, Musk couldn't possibly, Musk can't even enter Brazil. He might be arrested. Sounds like. <laughs> yeah, well, but like there's a timeline. So, in 2019, after this illegal inquiry was established by Moraes that censored a report about this other judge that he is his colleague at the Supreme Court, uh, a lot of people, after he did that, the right wing in Brazil did not do much. They wanted to do something. They wanted to crack down on the Supreme Court. They wanted to approve in, in Congress a judicial reform. They also wanted to uh, be strong, strongly more anti Supreme Court, but Bolsonaro back then, he had an issue. And that's where I criticize Bolsonaro. And I think he has a partial guilt on all of these schemes and all of these regimes is that Bolsonaro's son was being investigated by the Supreme Court and by other judges on a money laundering case, basically. One of his sons was being investigated. He's also a politician. And there was there are rumors that in order for his son to be saved, he did a deal with one Supreme Court justice, not the Morais, 
but one of them, I cannot say the name of the guy that he did, he probably did a deal with to save his son. And in return, they would, he said to people for his militants and for his supporters and for his politicians in Congress to stop this idea of having an invest on having investigations to uh and to see if there are any corruption if there is any corruption cases in the supreme court so because of that in 2020 things started to happen and to escalate more so i can talk about what happened in 2020 right now as everyone knows in 2020 there we had the lockdowns and the pandemic and all of these things, right? So a thing that happened here in Brazil during this period of time is that Bolsonaro was staunchly against lockdowns. I don't know if you guys heard of that in the US or I don't know, but he was staunchly against lockdowns. And the other politicians, the non-Bolsonaro's politic other political figures, both from the right, from the left, and from the center, they were all pro-lockdown. And the Supreme Court ministers were also pro-lockdown. And the governors, even right-wing governors, issued lockdowns back then. But Bolsonaro was against it. So he was planning to, as far as we know, lift the lockdowns in the country on April or May 2020 but and to override the mandates and all of the restrictions the governors were placing were putting in place the governors and mayors so because of that the supreme court things escalated a lot because of that, the supreme court uh issued a decision saying that bolsonaro could not override mayors and uh also uh mayors and and governors in their decisions in terms of the pandemic. So if Bolsonaro no, didn't issue a lockdown, he should, but your mayor of your town issued a lockdown, you should follow your mayor's orders, not Bolsonaro's orders. People in Bolsonaro's crowd and also in libertarian circles got really mad because we were against lockdowns and got really mad at the Supreme Court as well because of that, which uh, rose the tensions between the right wing in Brazil and the Supreme Court. Later on, on May, I ha actually have the date here, on May, uh, let me see here, the, the date, because I have like the exact date of what happened, uh, on May 27th, 2020, the Supreme Court, using the illegal inquiry from 2019 that I talked about, it started a fake news operation. And through this fake news operation that was supposed to investigate people who were attacking the Supreme Court and also used to investigate people that were talking against the Supreme Court and criticizing it, they issue an investigation uh, that uh, that really struck down a lot of Bolsonaro's uh, politicians, a lot of pro-Bolsonaro politicians. So only on May 27th of 2020, like one year and one month later, uh, they started to crack down on conservatives and people from Bolsonaro, from the Bolsonaro crowd of the right wing. So they issued investigations they start they raided homes and personal accounts of many bolsonaro's politicians many conservatives politicians and also influencers back then and and some entrepreneurs and some business owners that were also against the supreme court they froze some accounts they did an operation that people still don't know why it happened <laughs> to be quite honest and during this crazy operation that in in Brazil in 2020, things just got the tensions between the Supreme Court and the right wing just got worse because now they were starting to investigate and attack politicians. 
that's one important thing I like to mention about these politicians and what attacks they are making on the Supreme Court. In the US, they would be considered like kind of normal attacks, but they were basically uh, yelling at minute at Supreme Court justices, talking bad things about them, calling them bad words. And also they were, some of them were calling for a dictatorship. I'm against it, I oppose it. They were calling for the Supreme Court to be closed to, and Bolsonaro to be like the new Supreme leader of the dictatorship. Some of them were calling for that. They were attacking like the Supreme Court and saying through the internet, and saying that things would be better if it was closed and Bolsonaro was the dictator. So they said bad things, but uh, but these and these things would be uh, punished through Brazilian law. But at the same time, I don't think they would be punished through the this inquire. They would be punished through local courts probably. This would be like a more legal way to do things according to our law. <clears throat> So in 2020, they raided and persecuted a lot of people, a lot of right-wing people, because they were saying things bad. So this kind of became also a self-fulfilling prophecy. So they started to persecute people from the right. So these people got even more angry at the Supreme Court and started to say even more bad things about the Supreme Court. So this fueled more persecution. So it was like a, an endless circle because of that with some influencers. Some influencers had to leave the country because of, of the persecution they were suffering. Some of them went to Florida and to other places in the U.S. because they could not uh, say anything. So this was in 2020. And the tensions were rising between Bolsonaro and the Supreme Court as well, because the Supreme Court now, not only through the lockdowns, they were also engaging in judicial activism in other instances that they were not called to do. They were issue, issuing things that they were not asked to do. They were not elected for it. I know that here, no, there in the US, you guys have this thing that the Supreme Court right now is doing, uh, is issuing things related to abortion and to affirmative action. But here, it's kind of like that, but here it's not something we are used to, like judicial activism, meaning the Supreme Court legislating is not something that we are used to do. It, it's not something that uh, is was very common in Brazilian Supreme Court. So during Bolsonaro's government, a lot of measures were implemented by the Supreme Court that were at odds with his political agenda. For instance, the homophobia law, for, for example, the yeah. homophobia being illegal <laughs> in the way the Supreme Court interpreted to be illegal. It was against Bolsonaro's conservative agenda. Also, another thing that happened was when it comes to elections and to use, like, to have a paper uh, confirmation of our vote. Basically, there was something people from Bolsonaro's field was, they were really big on. I personally am a fan of this idea as well, to have another confirmation through paper, not only through voting machines, to see if the votes are matching if the votes are actually being counted and there is no interference, there is no hacking. So the Bo Bolsonaro supporters and politicians in Congress wanted to approve that, but the Supreme Court did not like that and they issued like a lot of orders and stopping this from stopping this, uh, this measure to be implemented. So the tensions were rising not only because of the sin of the persecutions, but also because of the of the other measures of the other judicial activisms the Supreme Court was doing back then. So fast forward to 2021, and things got really bad because there was this guy, a Bolsonaro politician and influencer, no named Daniel. Daniel, he did a video on his YouTube channel that was afterwards taken down. His account is still taken down in Brazil, but he did a video saying bad things about Alexandre de Moraes. He did a video where he not only criticized Alexandre de Moraes, but he implied that he had committed crimes. He implied that 
Alexandre de Moraes who had uh, relations with criminal gangs. This is not proven, so we cannot say that, but he did this implication in his video as well. And he also called for the closing of the Supreme Court and for a dictatorship. And I don't agree with him and what and with what he said, because a dictatorship would not be the solution to our problems back then. But he was like arrested in a very, very uh, weird way, because at first this inquiry, this fake news censorship inquiry that started in 2019 was used to arrest him. They said that he was being arrested. I don't know if you guys have this. How do you call when you're arresting someone that you just saw committing a crime, like in like you see someone robbing and you if you're a cop, you order an issue an arrest order for this person. You just saw the person committing a crime. Do you guys have any names for that? Uh just call it arresting somebody. I don't think there's any special word for it. Okay, yeah, here we have like a special word when we <coughs> someone when like this person commits a crime. Uh, in a very fast way, like and when yeah. someone commits a crime and you just see the crime, if you're a cop and ju you mm -hmm. just see someone yeah. committing a crime, we have a word for that. And he was arrested with this specification, but it, it didn't make sense because he was saying things on the internet. The internet was not a physical place mm -hmm. at first, first of all. And also, uh, it, was, it, was, it was not something that the government saw on uh, uh, yes. fast he, he didn't he just he was not like just arrested you know he mm -hmm. when the police was not with him police officers were not with him when he was recording and saying things that were criminal so this uh the way that the classification of his crime was wrong as well and yeah. also another irregularity people commit in this inquiry that elon musk is in is to uh, is to state that the internet is also a part of the Supreme Court. That's the biggest uh, scandal on yes. this law. Because according to, uh, to legislation in Brazil, crimes that are committed inside the Supreme Court, like if I go to, I'm not going to do that, but let's suppose someone goes to the Supreme Court and like kill someone there. It's a crime that was like committed inside the Supreme Court these crimes are to be judged in the Supreme Court, according to Brazilian law. And what they did in this inquiries was to expand the definition of what inside the Supreme Court meant to mean the internet. So if I issue a criticism yeah. of the Supreme Court through my, um, in my YouTube channel, or I don't know, through X or through Instagram, I can be put in this inquiry as someone who is committing a crime inside the Supreme Court. Another, oh. which does not make sense. And another irregularity, irregularity they are committing a lot, especially Alexander de Moraes, is that uh, he's being the victim and the judge of the process, basically. So he's judging cases where people are like attacking him or people attacking him, which is, does mm. not make sense. You don't judge if you're even if you're like a victim of a awful crime you are not the judge of this crime yes you should, you should go through a third party everyone knows that but this is other basic infringement yes. they are doing in terms of our law so fast forward i'm fasting i'm going fast because there are a lot of things so the tensions rose in 2021 bolsonaro in our independence day on september 7th 2021 did a speech saying that he was not going to follow. He said kind of like what Elon Musk said, but it was worse because he's like the president. So he said he was not going to follow any order of the Supreme Court he deemed illegal or he deemed that it should not be followed. And this was like a scandal back then because you cannot hear if the someone, a, ju a judge tells you to do something, you have to do it, you have to accept it. And then you complain later, you appeal for it later. Yeah. So because of that, uh, this was like a huge scandal back then, but things yeah. got a little bit cooler afterwards, after this, uh, this like in the Independence Day speech in on September 7th yeah. of 2021. 
And later on, fast forward to the elections in 2022, this was, yeah, yeah. Um, that was what that was when the electoral Supreme Court that I to talked uh, about in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, the, act yeah, the, yeah. More broadly, so fast forward in the 2022 elections, what happened was it was a very polarized election. Of course, there were. Lula was also released from prison. That's a whole other story. But I can talk about what happened and I can talk about what people yeah. said that lead to them being censored or arrested. I cannot, I can talk about the elections in yeah. these terms. But yeah. so Lula, uh, he, was, he was released in 2021 as well because the Supreme, by the Supreme Court judges, it was not something that I see some right-wing people, some American right-wing people making a mistake as well. I saw this guy, Ian, he's not even American, I guess, Ian Miles Chong on Twitter talking about yeah, that. Ian Miles Chung, yeah, yeah, he, I believe he is American. I'm not really sure. Yeah, people say he's from Malaysia or something like that. Well, but, well he's, he's very much a conservative who, uh, who uh, definitely... Yeah writes about a lot of things he, like this. Yeah, he implied that the person that released Lula was Alexandre de Moraes. No, it was not him only. It was like yeah. uh, the a lot of judges from, I think the vast majority of judges in the Supreme Court, they were voting for him to be released from prison because he was arrested in 2018. So, but they found that the judge that issued his arrest was too partial for their standards. And because of that, they, released Lula in, in 2021 and allowed him to compete in his in the elections for a third time since the 2000s. Yeah. So the election was really polarized because of that. It was Lula against Bolsonaro. Mm -hmm. Things were like really heated in yeah. the first <clears throat> round. Yeah. Some people, some polls, but polls are always getting things wrong these yeah. days. They were implying, they were projecting that Lula would win in the first round because here elections have two rounds. If yeah. if the candidate, if a candidate does not reach 51% of the vote or the of the valid yeah. votes in the first round, then we go to the second round between yeah. the two voted candidates. The two top so, top two, yeah. So, so yeah. a lot of polls were projecting that Lula would win in the first round. And because of that, and in the first round, they had like a surprise because Bolsonaro was behind Lula, but he was not very behind. It was like a five point difference between the two of them. And also, uh, together with that, a lot of pro Bolsonaro people were elected to Congress. A lot of right wing people, conservatives were elected to Congress. And that kind of scared the, the powers that be that did not want Bolsonaro to win this election again. So because of that, I think there was an overreaction in the second round. The problems, I know that there are probably some details or some things that bad things that happened in the first round, but the second round was when the Supreme Electoral, Electoral Court like acted really, really with really draconian measures. Alexandre de Moraes was the judge in this, and he, he was yes. the head of the Supreme Electoral Court or something. Yes. Yeah, we it have that's that's M O R A E S, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's, yeah uh, he's he's been a major player through all this. Yeah. Yeah. So he was he's the still a judge. Yeah. yeah. He is. He was the judge of the electoral Supreme Court yeah. mm -hmm. in Brazil, and while during his mandate back then, he issued a lot of censorship measures, especially against right wing content. A right wing yes. content produce a uh, right wing content media. And this is it's kind of like I, I like to say they are like the Daily Wire, but I think they are better than the Daily Wire in terms of the quality of the content they produce. Yeah. Called Brazil Paralelo, Brazil Paralelo. Yes. Called, they were starting to play. They wanted to air a documentary called Who, so Who Killed Bolsonaro? Who wanted to kill Bolsonaro? something like that because in 2018 Bolsonaro got a hit, got hit by a knife like someone stabbed Bolsonaro got stabbed during the election so uh so this they were censored they could not issue during the elections they could not issue this documentary they could also not in another right-wing tv 
news network could also not imply that Lula was a thief during the, the second run. Yes. Co political commentators could not say that Lula was a thief. Political commentators could not say yeah. anything about Lula, that Lula was friends with Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Cuba's dictator. So yeah. we had this very arbitrary measures and arbitrary censorships that happened, especially pertaining to right-wing content during the 2022 elections. So then we, we have the Lula won the 2022 in the second round. And after that, some people from Bolsonaro's camp revolted about the censorship that, that happened previously. They started, to, uh, they started to question the results of the elections. I don't think there was fraud. I don't think a things happened like in the voting machines. I don't think that. Yeah, and, yeah. But they started to question the election results, saying that elect the election was stolen, that there was fraud in the elections, and they also started to protest in front of the mili of military uh, places around the country, wanted calling for the military to intervene in the results of the elections, basically. So a lot of people back then, Alexandre de Moraes continued with his censorship special measures during this time and he issued a lot of censorships on a lot of people so during this period of time as well people who were calling for her saying there was fraud and stuff like that they took down a lot of accounts they called he called for twitter yeah. and instagram to take down a lot of these accounts so the censorship got more heavy after the election and right, fast forward to right now, they are trying to approve a censorship bill with the help from foreign NGOs here in Brazil to um, to like regulate social media in a very, very bad way, in a very like strict yes. way. So strict that even Google, Instagram, and Facebook is stated like they issued like institutional texts saying that the censorship bill, the the internet regulation bill was like really draconian and was really bad and could cause <clears throat> a lot of distortion. So even people who comply with, with the US censorship industrial complex see the censorship industrial complex we have here and the laws they want to implement to regulate social media as uh, draconian, as strict. So uh, currently we are waiting to see what happens basically elon said elon did some accusations that are going to be really interesting if they were if they are proven truth because this could file this could like fire up the opposition the right wing again to stop start fighting for an impeachment of this judge for take for they start to protest for taking down this yeah. judge but we're waiting to see what happens we're waiting to see uh, what else the censorship regime has and what else they would do. I don't think a, the censor, the internet regulation plan they have will pass currently because they, um, because there are no, not enough votes. People are really opposed to this bill, but I also am kind of black billed about the fact that some regulation will pass some internet regulation in brazil will pass yeah. so uh so i don't know we're waiting to see what will happen i'm glad to see facebook and google are actually standing against this i'm kind of shocked you know this is a pretty scary uh, yeah you know do you, do you have anything else to say before? this has been a, a very enlightening do you have anything else to say before we go or where we can find you out there on the on the internet you're at the mises institute and yeah i can, Twitter, so, yeah. can find me on I'm going to put my here in the comments and then you my X page. I mostly tweet on Portuguese, but the translate tool works most of the time and it works kind of well. So but I also do some tweets on some on in English. Yeah. And you got yeah, you got good English yet. Yeah. Uh yeah, and I don't know if you're following paying attention to me lay down in Argentina, but yeah, it's uh, been pretty impressive. So yeah. yeah. Uh well, will I get arrested if I say anything nasty about Pelé? No, no. You will not get arrested. I, I figure he's a god down there. Since, or, or, or any oh, other well, people there. like him here. He was he's actually from my parents' hometown. Yeah. So, but 
it's not something that yeah. people like him, but it's not something people will kill you if you say, oh, I think, yeah. I don't know, some other player is better. You know? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and they love they love their yeah, so unfortunately he's gone. Yeah, they, they love their sports in Brazil though. It's uh, mm -hmm. well, it's been great having you here. Uh, you know, uh, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and uh, and uh, please uh, and check out my novel Escape from the Village and. Uh, oh, cool! And, I didn't know you have a novel. I'm yeah, and of course, uh, check out my Substack and uh, thank you, Marina. I'm Marina Rocha. I'm Chris Baker, and we're out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess.